they would say, I believe everybody has a purpose in life. And when that purpose is fulfilled, God calls us home. And whatever her purpose was, she fulfilled that before she was ever born. And I take comfort in that because had it not been for Melody, this bill wouldn't be a reality now. Because I didn't even know this was an issue until it happened to us. I, I had no idea. And as I told Christine, I said, even if I can't have this, this needs to happen. This needs to be done. And so often I think in life we, we wait for somebody else to take that initiative. We, we expect somebody else to step forward and say, I will fight for this, when all along we are the ones that have to step forward and fight for it. And so we passed out of, um, out of HR in the Senate, 3-0, no changes. The next day I went back for the um, full HR meeting and um, just a couple of them said a few things, and apparently they, they came in for the meeting and they caucus. and apparently in the caucus there were a couple people, a couple of senators who were starting to, you know, raise a little bit of a, you know, why are we doing this, but, you know, they're like, look, and he passed out of the house, and Tom Yoakum, whose ex-wife is also legislator, Pam Yoakum, you know, they went to these guys and they said, look, if Tom didn't believe in this, he wouldn't stand up for this. He, he is not one of the people that just takes up causes for no reason. You know, this is a good bill, this is something we need to do. And so it dropped. And so when it went before full HR, they all voted for it. They all passed it. And um, we finally were able to get a date for the debate um, in the Senate. And when I had warned folks, I said, if you, you, know, if you, if you want to come to one of two things, come to the bill signing. Um, because the Senate's not, I've already been told, they both agreed in caucus again in the Senate side. They're voting for this. This is not going to be a controversial thing. Um, but, you know, I said, Christina, if you can make it, I would love you to be there. And so she and her son, Corey, were able to be there for the Senate vote. And we, uh, and my husband David was up there, and Tom, and we were up in the, up in the gallery, and Grant introduces the bill, and Sir Wolcott talks a little bit, and he actually, you know, really has some nice, nice things to say about it. For someone who really wasn't for this to begin with, he really he did a nice job with it. And I guess I should mention in the subcommittee meeting, Senator Hatch really did a phenomenal job of shutting down Planned Parenthood because he is very pro-choice and he normally supports Planned Parenthood wholeheartedly. But, you know, they said, well, you know, the, the birth certificate will say a certificate of birth resulting in stillbirth. It will not say a certificate of live birth. And somewhere on there it will say this is not proof of live birth. So any of your potential problems are, are washed away with already in how our language reads. You can't use a certificate of birth resulting in stillbirth to bring about a lawsuit or to say wrongful death, any of that. You, you can't do it. Still the only legal document for that child is a certificate of fetal death. And so he, he really did um, do, did a nice job with that committee. But anyway, in the Senate vote, Senator Bolton spoke. And then our, Senator Butker stood up and, you know, was very appreciative because she's Republican and she had like 18 co-sponsors in the original Senate bill, but couldn't move it because she wasn't chair of that committee, she wasn't on the subcommittee, she, there's nothing I can do. I said, it's okay, we already know we're going to come over from the House and then we'll be all right. Um, but, uh, so she, she stood up and just said, you know, she appreciated that we could all come together and, and do this. Um, you know, do this for families, and as Christine and I watched, um, they one by one, and we watched all 50 lights turn green. And I mean, and Christine was in tears, I was in tears, you know. And, you know, something she had wanted to see happen for 11 years was finally coming through. And um, just, just phenomenal to be able to watch that. And then um, they pushed it along so that because the governor was going to be out of town at the end of that week, and so, but they got it moving through the process because once it's passed, you still have some paperwork that all has to be done. Governor has a three-day window to sign it, you know, but they were all, all getting in line to do it. And then we had the signing on Monday the 26th. And we brought our girls up and um, several other families were able to make it and come for it. And we are now number 33. This bill, it, it's bittersweet for me because and for every parent, because it still doesn't bring our children back. But, you know, 
I go back to the fact that we will always have empty arms. And on one hand, we will hold the death certificate for our child because that's what the law says, that's what our society does. But now on the other hand, we have the right to have a birth certificate for that child. The law is retroactive so that any parent named on that fetal death certificate can get one. Even if you're divorced, you don't have to have the, your ex-husband's or ex-wife's signature. If you're the parent named on there, you can request that. And it's optional. If in your grief process you choose not to do this, that's okay too. Because we don't, you know, just because I want this doesn't mean the next person wants it or needs it. And that's okay. But now they have the right to have that. Um, and it changes a policy to code. So it doesn't matter whether you agree or disagree that a stillborn child should have a birth certificate. I will code now says any parent named on a field estimate has the right to this and you will give this to them when they fill out the paperwork and send them the $15 fee or whatever it is and do it. 